Hi, my name is Murphy Griffin, and welcome to episode 17 of Neophyte Boat Rights. This episode will be the first part of a multi-part series documenting the entire planking process for our Newfoundland Trap Skiff build. So let's get to it. So what's planking all about? Planking a boat basically is siding the boat, much like you would side a house. We are going to be planking our Newfoundland trap skiff, lap strake. What it means to plank a boat lap strake is, first off, that each plank will be overlapping the neighbor below it. Secondly, it means that in order to achieve the shape of the hull, the tops of each plank are beveled to change the direction of the succeeding plank. When planking a boat lap strake, what you're essentially doing is coopering out the shape of your hull. Basically, you're building a big, sexy, open-ended barrel. However, this is an oversimplification of the lap strake planking process. So what I'm going to talk about in this episode is first how we installed the garbards, which are the first two planks that go in the boat, as well as how we approach the procedure of lining off the hull which is basically figuring out where each of the planks are going to land on the molds, transom, and stem. So here's a synopsis of the planking process and how we install the garbards. The garbards, being the first planks, were lined off in such a way that the ends went as high up as we could comfortably accomplish. We then figured out the shape of the garbards using a spiling batten. With that shape recorded, we could then transfer it to the planking stock. I'll explain more about spiling in one of the next episodes. All the transferred points are then fared in with a batten. This will give us the shape of the garbard. The garbards were then cut out of the planking stock and then planed down to their final thickness. For the garbards as well as the next two pairs of planks, we had to boil the ends. To boil the plank ends, we simply wrapped the ends of the planks in a blanket, poured boiling water over that blanket, covered it in plastic, and let it sit for 45 minutes, and then unwrapped it and installed it. Boiling the ends makes the wood more pliable in those areas where there's a lot of twist. Finally, the garbards were nailed to the centerline timbers. First, a pilot hole was drilled, and then we made a second pass with a larger bit just to make sure that the plank didn't split out when we were driving the nails. With the garbards finally installed, we are ready to line off the rest of the planks and start the planking process proper. So once we got the garbards installed, we started lining off the hull. Basically, lining off consists of finding out where all the planks are going to land on the transom, molds, and stem. Central to understanding this procedure, at least in my opinion, is understanding the mathematical notion of arc length. Arc length is the measurement that you get when you measure along a curve as opposed to across a curve. So for instance, say we take this measuring tape and we measure from the start of the shear line down the length of our mold. If we look at every inch measurement along that tape and where it lands along the edge of the mold, 
then we're measuring equal arc length segments. When lining off for the planks, what we're basically doing is measuring the station curves, as represented by the molds, and dividing them up evenly according to the number of planks that we're going to be planking our boat with. So that's basically what lining off boils down to. We're subdividing the mold curves, the transom curve, and the stem into equal arc length segments. So in order to accomplish this, we could of course take a measuring tape and figure out what the overall length is and then take a calculator and calculate that divided by nine or eight or 10 or however many planks you're going to be putting on your boat. Problem with that is you're very likely to get an irrational number, something that you can't actually easily measure with a measuring tape. So there's a cool geometric workaround for figuring out what all these equal arc length measurements should be for each given mold. So first we made what's called a division board. A division board is a simple tool that requires nothing more than a board or a piece of paper, a straight edge, a pencil, and some sort of measuring device to produce. Once completed, the division board will help you divide up any arbitrary distance evenly without ever using a measuring device. First start by establishing a baseline on your piece of paper or your board. Then find the midpoint of that baseline and from that midpoint draw a perpendicular line. Then fix a point some arbitrary distance along this perpendicular line. The farther the better. You then place a series of dots along this baseline, each pair of dots being equally spaced and the number of dots representing the number of planks that you'll put on one side of your boat. Here in this example, you see a division board for eight planks. Now, simply to make the division board connect each one of these points on your baseline with the fixed point above the baseline. Thus, with all these lines drawn, the division board is made. Now, to use the division board, you start with a batten. There are two marks on this batten representing the distance that you want to divide evenly. In this case, the two marks represent the shear line and the lap line for the garbird for a given mold. You then position the batten so that the two marks are touching the leftmost and the rightmost lines on the division board. Then as long as the batten is parallel with the baseline, you can pick up all the other intersections between the interior lines in the batten. You thus have generated a tick stick which will subdivide the given mold into equal arc length segments. Now all you have to do is offer the tick stick to the mold and transfer all the points. This process is repeated for each of the molds and the transom. This animation ought to give you a bigger picture of what's going on when we're lining off the hull. Here you see the profile view of the Newfoundland trap skiff, along with the station line curves from the body plan view positioned at each of their respective stations. So first what we're going to do is divide up the station curves and the transom curve into equal arc length segments. So here you see dots being placed along the transom line curve representing each arc segment. In the same way, each of the body plan curves are subdivided according to arc length. Remember that the stem in the body plan view is just a vertical line. So here we'll use the forward perpendicular to represent the stem and subdivide it according to arc segment as well. So now we've divided up all of the body plan curves and it's important to note that the individual subdivisions are not all equal from one station curve to the next. Now we're going to project each of those points to the corresponding lines in the profile view. First we'll start with a transom and add some dashed lines to represent the projection lines. Now each point will be projected along the projection lines to the transom as seen in the profile view. We now repeat this process for the fifth station line. We add dashed lines representing the projection lines again, 
Then again, along those projection lines, we project the points to the fifth station line in the profile view. We then repeat this projection process for all the remaining station lines. So in practice, all that you've done at this point is divided up all the mold curves and transferred those points to the physical molds. Now we need to discuss the stem projections. To help you understand how we approach this, I'm going to add a diagonal line. As you can see, this line connects the highest and lowest points on the outboard edge of the bearding line. Here what's important to notice is that the projection lines are subdividing the diagonal line into equal arc sections as well. So you can see that no matter whether we project from the forward perpendicular or had we projected from our diagonal line, we would have gotten the same result. So in order to line off at the stem, we clamp the batten to the stem to function just as that diagonal line did in the diagram. We subdivided the length of the batten into eight equal segments and then transferred those marks to the stem. We then projected those marks to the front of the stem using a small level as a guide. Now all the marks that you've placed on your molds and your transom and your stem can be connected with fair lines. These fair lines constitute the planking lines for the hull. And the way that they're physically generated is using a lining batten to connect all the dots that you've transferred to your boat. So what you're actually doing here is using the lining batten to check if this division process actually gave you fair results. You may very well have to adjust some of the marks in order to get a fair line with your lining batten, but for the most part we didn't have any issues here. And so here you can see all the planking lines for our Newfoundland trap skiff. It's good to recognize that the distance between any two lines here does not represent plank width. Instead, the distance between any two pair of lines represents how horizontal or how vertical the shape change is of the hull in that given region. Anyways, with the hull now completely lined off, we could start preparing the boat for the spiling process. So that's episode 17. I really hope you enjoyed it. Tune in for the next episode, which is the second part in this multi-part series, where I'll be discussing how to cut the gains and shape the bevels on the transom and on the tops of the planks. So you might have noticed that I'm no longer recording from my shop in Jacksonville, Florida. In fact, my family and I have all moved to a farm in Charles City, Virginia. We made this move for, among other reasons, so I could start a job as an apprentice wheelwright at Colonial Williamsburg. So this is in part why there's been such a long hiatus since the last episode to this current episode. The boat has been moved with me to Virginia where I will continue to work on it and hopefully complete it within the next year. Some of you may be wondering what is gonna happen with Madison. Now obviously Madison didn't move with us to Virginia, but he will be visiting periodically to help out with the boat build. If you're enjoying this series and you see value in what I'm doing here, then please, please, please subscribe to our channel as well as consider becoming a patron on our Patreon. And on that note, we've got one new patron. Much thanks to Charles Conway. Thanks. Bye.